Skincare, big business, of course, in the UK. There is growing concern, though, among dermatologists about children as young as eight using anti-aging products intended for adults. Now, they often contain active ingredients like exfoliating acids that have become increasingly popular with kids as a result of social media. Annabelle Rackham reports. Eight-year-old Sadie says she first came across videos of influencers doing skincare routines a couple of months ago. She saw products being advertised on TikTok and YouTube Shorts and asked family members to buy them for her as presents. What is it that you love about skincare? Um, I see about the packaging because I like all the colours on it and like the labels. How, how does it, you know, how does it all get laid out? What do you do? I just do like the biggest to the smallest. So like washing my face, that's the biggest thing. And then like lip balm, that's the smallest thing. And then this is the lip. But skin specialists say they're worried about what ingredients are in some of the products that are most popular with children. Why have you stopped using some of the products? Well, it's because I'm a bit young and I, know that my face is a bit young and it, sometimes it hurts. How does it hurt? Like stinging. Beauty stores across the country stock these products. There's no age limit on buying them and they're freely available on shelves. But with many parents going in to buy them on behalf of their children, it's hard to get the message across that they are not suitable for them. One of the most popular brands with young people, Drunk Elephant, has released a statement advising kids and tweens to stay away from their most potent products that include acids and retinols. So you're a lot of the policing is falling on parents like Sadie's mum, who are having to educate themselves on what these products contain. Sort of stopped the TikTok um, part because that's easy to police because you shouldn't be on it under 13 anyway. In a lot of the videos is sort of hidden things of the products rather than it being displaying it. So it's very cleverly done so that children are seeing it but not even thinking they're seeing it. And it's in everything that is on there. Every video now that she watches has got some kind of skincare product in it. Sadie's my youngest child and she's eight. I didn't think I'd have to worry about her doing skincare and policing skincare at this age, you know, I feel like they grow up so quickly anyway, and it feels like her childhood's now been taken away and she's all of a sudden a teenager looking at skincare when she doesn't have to. Lucy, like many other parents, is hoping that retailers and brands do more to stop products that aren't designed for children from getting into the wrong hands. Annabelle Rackham, BBC News. Well, we're joined now by consultant dermatologist, Dr Emma Wedgworth. Emma, it just seems crazy that our young girls, and I'm guessing this may apply to boys as well at some stage in their lives, are being drawn into this world of anti-aging yeah. at the age of, what, less than 10? Absolutely. It's, it's insane. I mean, first of all, from a dermatological perspective, Preteen and teen skin is very different to adult skin. So it has quite a distinct microbiome, balance of good and bad bacteria. It has a totally different physiology. So it has totally different needs to adult skin. So there's absolutely no rationale for this age group to use products which are designed for aging skin. So a lot of this is being driven by social media. We know the popularity of TikTok shop, for example, these days. So you can buy products directly from the people who are promoting them on uh, different social media platforms. Mm -hmm. um, how reliable are the kind of messages that kids are getting on those kinds of platforms? I mean, absolutely unreliable. And I think you heard in that report that that little girl was buying things because of the packaging mm. and the aesthetic. And I think that's very much the case. Um, younger people are driven by the packaging, the aesthetic of the product, they want to be a bit more like the influencer. And so actually the, the reliability of the, why they're choosing the product is really, really very minimal. Emma, what have you seen firsthand uh, in terms of damage related to young people? So what you can see is a lot of irritation within the skin. So preteen skin particularly doesn't produce the same level of oil as um, adult skin. And so the sort of exfoliants, acids, retinols can actually cause quite a lot of irritation. I'm also concerned about young... Sorry, just go through that mm -hmm. in more layman's terms. What do you actually see? I mean, ah. what, what's, what's happening, talking about faces presumably most of the time here, yeah. what are you seeing? 
So you'll see dryness, flaking, irritation. At the end of that spectrum, you can end up seeing like eczema-like changes. So when you have someone, say, and, and maybe this has happened to you, you get a 10-year-old, a 12-year-old mm -hmm. come in, you tell me, and they come in and you can see, see that. And you are, presumably you ask some questions, you say, what have you been using? Mm -hmm. Just take me through one of those scenarios where you've heard things that have alarmed you. So often people, younger people, will come in with facial eczema. That's something that we see quite a lot. And you'll ask them, so which products are you using? And sometimes they will reel out this whole long list of products. And you'll then look at their skin and realise that actually it's the irritation that's being caused by those sorts of products. So that's when you'll step in and actually just wheel right back and try and educate them about the sorts of products that they should be using to optimise their skin. The other concern is, I know, that, that some people really worry about is some of these products containing endocrine disrupting chemicals which can affect your hormonal system, that can have impacts on your reproductive system and all sorts of things going on. How much does that worry you? And actually, that, to be honest, applies to, to people of any age using cosmetics. So that doesn't worry me quite so much. I mean, the facial skin is quite a small percentage of your body surface area, so 1% to 2%. And the amount you're going to absorb of those sorts of products is going to be reasonably small. The things that I really worry about are the things like the eczema that I, I said when I, when I um, was talking about that. The other thing is allergies. So if we're exposing our young people to lots of products over a long period of time, that can result in an increase in allergies. But more than all of that, it's the mental aspect of things, the psychological ramifications of these young people spending huge amounts of time obsessing over their appearance mm -hmm. and trying to live up to beauty standards, which aren't real. Like, we all know that social media is really... It's not a real um, reflection of what skin is like. Well, not with filters these days. And that is a really important point, because the amount of time young people spend these days simply looking at themselves on camera, whether that's FaceTime, whether that's sending snaps, whether it's just looking at themselves to check their appearance, mm -hmm. which just cannot be very good for a young, vulnerable mind. I totally agree. And I think that can increase the risk of issues with self-image, with confidence, um, with sort of body image and mental health, essentially. So, look, there'll be parents listening now who'll say, what is a good basic... Um, is it natural for teenagers to feel a bit self-conscious about their skin, and it's particularly if they're getting spotty and so on? So, what is a good basic skincare regime? And you don't obviously need to name products, but yeah. what should teenagers generally do? Well, exactly. I'm not saying don't do anything, because I know what it's like. You know, I was once a teenager and know that it's quite fun to experiment with things. But your skin is an organ. It's the biggest organ in your body and you need to take care of it. So what teenagers should be doing is cleansing once to twice a day with a nice gentle cleanser which doesn't disrupt the skin barrier or irritate the skin. A moisturiser which is tailored to their own individual skin type, so that might be a lotion if you've got oily skin, a cream if you've got drier skin, and then, boring as it may sound, sun protection, which is still the single most effective anti-ageing aspect that we have as dermatologists. Are there times, uh, Emma, I don't doubt you're very, very professional in, in way, the way you talk to people, but are there times when parents bring in children and you despair at parents as to the decisions or ha how they are handling a situation? Um, as a parent myself, I would say that parenting is the hardest job I have ever done. That is done. clearly true. So I would never despair. I, have I don't really mean a criticism in a way. I just yeah. mean you, you must reflect on that a bit because th there is a responsibility, isn't there? That's probably a more appropriate word. Of course. I have a 14-year-old and a 12-year-old, but I also know how hard it is to sometimes push back against that sort of pressure. And I'm a professional. I know exactly what my kids should and shouldn't be using. Um, I have every sympathy, and my job as a dermatologist is to try and support both the child and the young person and also their parent without judgement. So, like I said, I've been in that situation. I have nothing but sympathy, but I am there to outline what is the right thing to do. Um, so that's what I try to do. It's my job. It's a really useful conversation to have with you. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank I think you. everyone listening at home, watching at home, will have found it very helpful as well. Uh, Dr Emma Wedgworth, who's a consultant dermatologist from the British Cosmetic Dermatology Group, thank you. And